Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are getting ready for the top eight group division, group playoff here at uh, Masters Tour Seoul. I am Brian Kibler, joined by Gia, and we've had 12 rounds of Swiss to get us to this point, and we finally have our top eight, and uh, so far, what, what do you think of it? It has been quite a marathon, and we have two Reno Hunters, two Priests, I think, if I wasn't mistaken, looking at the top eight there. And just seeing those classes at all is making me very happy. Yeah, a lot of players coming into this, they were like, oh, it's just going to be, I mean, I, I think you even tweeted, you know, ready for Mage Mirrors when, when the tournament started, kind of jokingly. And while there were a lot of Mage Mirrors, it, it turned out to be the players who expected those Mage decks and brought the decks that they prepared to defeat Mages, mm -hmm. who really are the ones who have had the most success. Uh, Liss at the top of the standings, uh, who I believe we will be seeing in our first match, is playing Reno Hunter. We just saw Staz pick up a win in the, the end of the last round to make that top eight as well, playing Reno Hunter. And uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, at the standings and the, the bracket, I believe, in just a moment, uh, where we're going to you're going to see exactly who will be playing in this top eight uh playoff bracket so as we were just mentioning uh, rng list in first place uh at 11 and 1 playing reno hunter i believe uh and then we just we just talked about this before but zim dead draw staz magaho you need felcane and suny rounding out our top eight with suny with those excellent tiebreakers uh just narrowly narrowly beating out his uh, friend and practice partner, Physics King, both playing that priest deck. Right, and I have to say my heart goes out to Physics King, narrowly missing the top eight, despite having, I think, a better score today than Suni did, because he did take that loss to Suni yesterday. And then they both ended up at 9-3. Mm -hmm. And so I was mistaken. That does mean there is only one priest in the top eight, but still, that is one more than I expected to see before the tournament started. All right, well, let's take a look at how this bracket is going to play out. Uh, so we are playing broken down into uh, two groups, uh, and the top players from these groups will advance to compete in the single elimination portion of this tournament tomorrow. So it's effectively a, uh, a modified double elimination mm -hmm. uh, bracket here. And we see these are uh, list. We'll be playing Suni in our very first match. Uh, and that is the Reno Hunter against the uh, Combo Priest. And then we'll see Staz going up against Magaho. Yeah. And that is another Reno Hunter against the uh, the Hybrid Bomb Control Warrior. Yes, and I do think that the Hunter in both of these matchups um, probably has a better chance against the Warrior than it does against the Priest because um, Hunter is less able to run, let's say, only one copy of Deadly Shot, which is very important to be able to remove all the ta tall minions from Priest. One of the things uh, about the the hundred X that actually has been pretty impressive in in my experience against the uh, against the priests is all the secrets. Mm -hmm. There are a number of secrets that can be really awkward for them to play around. Uh, freezing trap, pressure plate in particular, really makes the the priest decks think twice about how they maneuver their turn. So uh, I, I think that both these matchups have the potential to be pretty close. For sure. And now I've got the win rates for all the classes after the twelve. Rounds of Swiss and Mage sits at exactly 50%. After so it's a, it, you would say it. it's an average deck. Sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> on average, you either draw Luna's Pocket Galaxy or you don't. Uh, I hate to oversimplify, but uh, well, yeah, Warrior actually at 46%. Warrior. All right, well, let's take a look at the, the uh, Group B bracket. Uh, this will be the other half of the players battling to make it to that top four. Uh, Zim versus Felcane and Deadra versus Unid. I believe Zim and Felcane are both playing Mage. Uh, and Deadra, I believe, uh, is playing Control Warrior. Unid is actually the one player in the top eight whose uh, archetype I'm not totally certain of. Yeah, I don't think we've had the chance to cast him just yet, but that does mean we have a fair spattering of Warrior, and of course Mage still was able to break into the top eight, just because, at least, because of the sheer amount of Mages that were present to begin with. Yeah, I mean, but if you, if you do look at the breakdown here, you know, they, they it's basically more anti-mage than mage, mm -hmm. right? And, and and I wonder what this uh, means for the success of the Warriors. Right. Because the Warriors, a lot of what sort of kept their performance down, you're just talking about how Warrior had among the, the weaker performances in right. the tournament, but that was in large part due to the popularity of mage. Mm -hmm. Now that we've actually made it to the top eight, and it is the, the mage slayers that largely have, have taken up most of the top eight, 
will the Warriors be able to take down the Mage Slayers? Because we've seen the the Warriors go up against a Combo Priest. Right. And generally, the Warrior has won. Though, Sunni's version is the, the Octasari <laughs> Chef Nomi Seance version, right. and, and that definitely has a lot more chance than some of what we saw. Yeah, so over in Group B, I did just get confirmation that Unit is playing Rogue, which is okay. also considered a Mage Slayer. Right. And he lined up against Control Warriors, so exactly the narrative you yeah. were pushing is going to be a problem, I suppose, for the Mage Slayers at the very beginning. But after that, if if um, Dead Draw is able to take what we suppose will be a win, he will have to face a mage. Right. So it really depends on how the brackets, I guess, will shake down. But um, I mean, the fact that they were able to go 12 rounds and run into a variety of matchups really speaks to how comfortable they are in the each yep. archetype. All right, well, I think we are about ready for the very first of our initial matches. So. Uh, we're going to take a look. It's going to be, as we said, you need, or no, sorry, Liss versus Suni. Mm -hmm. Too busy talking about you need right now. Uh, they are going to be our very first match. So uh, what do you think about that one? It's going to be the, the Reno Hunter against the, uh, the Priest deck. Right, so I think I've only had the opportunity to cast this matchup once throughout mm -hmm. the weekend. On paper, I would put it favoring the Priest, but you did mention that those secrets can be a huge pain for the Priest to deal with. So it's possible that the Hunter gets that type of draw that really pushes the Priest out of the game. And of course, we've been seeing stats show the consistency of the Hunter deck, which, I mean, I was a non-believer at the beginning of the weekend, I will admit, but it seems to just have enough early game to get there. And as long as they can hit either Bran or Zul'jin, sometimes it just works out. Yeah, I, I feel like both these decks are, are decks that really do rely pretty heavily on uh, getting control of the board in the early game. Uh, the Priest deck, you know, if it's able to get a Narshar Cleric with extra arms down, uh, it's going to be, you know, extremely difficult for the Hunter to come back outside of one of those traps. Mm -hmm. So RNG list, I'm not completely aware of the differences of his list and Stasis, but he was the very top of the Swiss, 11 and 2. And in a field as stacked as this, I'd have to say that is an incredibly impressive record. Yeah, and we, uh, we see the players getting ready for their match on camera right now. So they are uh, they are getting prepared. This is uh, Liss's deck. You're just saying, you know, looking at the the differences between their lists, uh, and and one of the things that really stands out to me, just very first off, look at the secondary and tertiary decks. It's only swapping two cards, and this is something that I, I was actually talking with a friend of mine about about how you know. You, you often you know, look at, okay, I wanna, I wanna uh, swap things out in my, for each of my decks, and I feel like I wanna maximize the value I'm getting from them. So people often feel compelled to put, take out five cards, put in five cards. There's two swaps being made here, just right. two. You know, there's the Blood Silk Corsair and Acidic Swamp Boost coming in for the Hunter's Pack and Spellbreaker. Very clearly the anti-aggro package, right. looking to play against Rogue with that. The Tertiary deck brings in Mojo Master Zihi and Youthful Brewmaster for the Exposed Trap and Mask Contender. Pretty clearly the anti-warrior package. Uh, I do want to just take a moment and say I love Mojo Master Zihi against Warrior. Mm -hmm. uh, shutting down the Omega cards is so powerful against them. Uh, but here we have Sunni's deck. And uh, this is, you know, very much a, uh, a very, very different deck, very different uh, plans we see with the secondary and tertiary decks because it is fundamentally swapping plans for different matchups. Right. Where the uh, Divine Spirit Inner Fire just buff up my minions plan doesn't work against either aggro or against Control Warrior. We see the uh, Nomi Octasari plan coming in as well as a, a, you know, a Witchwood Grizzly Bone Wraith Zilliax. Uh, Soul Priest and Ooze coming in for the, the aggressive decks. For both players, I think they're including at least one of their sideboards for Warrior and the other yes. for Rogue with some side benefits of other matchups, but they're right. not teching specifically for each other. So I am probably going to say that they'll stick on their primary throughout the entire series. But interesting that you brought up that philosophy of how many cards is actually optimal to switch in Specialist. And I would say for most decks, it does make sense to try and, you know, take every advantage you can and use all five slots. But when it comes to Highlander decks, are there even upwards <laughs> yeah, of 35 different cards right. that it's you like want to put in your deck? How many good cards are there for me to play? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> And so I can definitely understand if there's only one or two that um, Liss wants to swap around. All right, well, taking a look at the players on the screen, they are getting ready. We see uh, some deep breaths coming out of Suni on the right-hand side of the screen. You know, he has had a uh, a number of challenging matchups so far where he has narrowly taken victories, but this one 
It's about as important as any of them ha you know, yeah. can possibly have been because he is just uh, a couple of wins away from advancing to the elimination rounds here at Masters Tour Soul. It's honestly really jarring to have to go directly from your last Swiss round into the top eight. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't know, usually when I've cast tournaments, it's usually, okay, these days for Swiss, and then you take a break, then we go to our top eight. You feel the stakes rising, but these guys have barely had any time to catch a breath, and they're now playing for much bigger differences in prize pool. Yeah, you know, the, uh, these players are all guaranteed, I believe, at least $10,000 for securing a spot in the top eight, but that first prize, that first prize is $100,000. So pretty big difference there uh, between winning out the rest of the day and uh, taking your first couple of losses. And Suni with the Cleric on the play yet again. We have seen quite a few Clerics coming out from Suni here. And, uh, you know, this is a pretty strong draw from Liss as well. You know, he does have Zephyrus. The rest of his draw is, is you know, a little bit awkward, a little expensive. But Zephyrus alone is extremely powerful, especially because you know, it can offer answers to Suni getting, you know, say, a buffed up Cleric. You know, Zephyrus can give you silence. You can end up just taking that off the board pretty quickly. I mean, he's got both of the Highlander activated oh, cards. Mm -hmm. He's got Raza and Kazakus in hand. <laughs> and so I wonder about the philosophy of how you mulligan for this Reno Hunter, because back in the day, it's obviously a very crude comparison, but as priests, you would often just keep Raza, Kazakus, Anduin every single time, even though some of them took very long to come online. Uh, but I would imagine that the Zephyrus is more than enough to stabilize. This is interesting to me. That, that list chose to coin out the Zephyrus, particularly because he has a pretty, ooh, Divine Spear is a drop. I was gonna say, particularly because he has a, a pretty expensive hand, mm -hmm. and now Suni is just able to uh, power shield plus inner fire, and now Liss has nothing. Yeah, I mean, the backstab pick was almost a snap pick. I didn't even get to see what the other options It was Argent Protector and Loot Hoarder were the two other options. Okay. So. I'm not sure. Harder seemed like it could at least get some more draw going. Well, so I think the thought process for List was that backstab gives him a way to cl to clear cleric against powered shield. Right. The problem was that there was powered shield inner and fire. inner fire, and that allowed the, it allowed uh, Sunni to kill the cleric immediately, or rather to to kill the Zephyrus immediately and uh, keep the cleric on the board. So that that backstab is just kind of awkward here. That's true. And maybe it was good except against that specific two-guard combination, but I also feel like Backstab, in terms of flexibility, probably isn't all that great against Priest when they're playing cards that immediately damage themselves. Right. And so I feel like overall Loot Hoarder might consistently get you to something you would rather play from your deck. I mean, the, the biggest thing is is Liss's hand is very expensive, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, he has the... Uh, the uh, Spellbreaker as well, and you know, say he plays Zephyrus on two, and Suni, you know, buffed up his cleric and, and killed the the Zephyrus. Okay, well, you can coin Spellbreaker, okay. uh, and by using the coin, uh, or rather by using the uh, the Zephyrus with the coin immediately, he put himself in a slightly awkward position. Ooh, the Hunter's, Hunter's mark, mark is really nice, mm -hmm. especially with backstab and unleash the yeah. house. Those are easy ways to activate that. Yes, he will be leaving an Amet on board this turn, which means that at least one minion most likely will be getting buffed, but... Um, yeah, this is this is really powerful. Accolade of Pain coming down as a 1-7. I would expect an Injured Tolvir also to come down. Becoming a 2-4 after the battle cry. And, I mean, there's Divine Spirit Topsy-Turvy in hand for Sunni here, so uh, one of these big minions is 14. So he can go Hunter's Mark, Backstab, Unleash the Hounds, and that does deal with... Ah, no, the Tolvir is damaged! Ah. Right, you can't, yeah. I mean, one of the funny things that you could do if you weren't just at risk of dying is just Hunter's Mark the, the Amet and makes all any future minion your opponent plays just have one health. Um, but the problem is, well, there's two other minions in play, yeah. <laughs> and you got to deal with them because you know Divine Spirit plus Inner Fire, Divine Spirit Topsy Turvy is gonna blow you up. And there's literally Suni is assuming a uh, just a, uh, a Hunter's Mark backstab here is able to get you know put to two damage off lethal next turn. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's ever any consideration for, say, Spellbreaker onto the Taunt, get that mana expenditure out of the way, and then the next turn try and deal with multiple things, but that seems like it's countered by way too many things. Right, like yeah, this, there's, just too much that, there's too much that goes really poorly for you here. Wow, interesting, okay. 
is going to go ahead and just attack this down to one. But this is just lethal. Divine Spirit Topsy Turpy yep. mm -hmm. is just lethal. Yeah, 14 plus the four on board. So that is going to be a quick game one yeah. for Suni. And I feel like this would be an outcome that's not too outlandish for this matchup, but RNG I List didn't hit Pressure Play for well, Fusion Cap or Deadly But Shot. List just has the card he took from Zephyrus in hand when he died. Yeah. That That is not the perfect card, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, l l let's just be serious about this. I, I feel like he just really didn't consider the implications uh, of the sequence of plays that he made there necessarily quite. You know, obviously, he had a plan. His plan was that he wanted the backstab in order to be able to, to kill the, the cleric just in case it got e you know extra arm. I guess it couldn't even extra arm, but in case it got uh, power specifically shielded. powered shielded, right? Uh, but in doing so, set everything else he could possibly do back. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like you know playing the Zephyrus turn two and leaving yourself with much more flexibility with the rest of your hand thanks to that coin would be more powerful. Yeah, I can definitely get behind that, especially since the rest of his hand was very late game, right. and the coin could provide a power spike at a different point. Uh, he, he died against buffed minions with a Zephyrus card and a Silence card in his hand. Mm -hmm. Like that... Something <laughs> went wrong there. <laughs> right, right. Something went wrong. And, you know, I... I I, I don't really know. Maybe he expected to get something different off the Zephyrus, because actually it, it did take him a second to pick it. Um, and, you know, because a lot of times, if you if you Zephyrus on an empty board with the coin, you almost always get Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah. And it's possible that maybe he was thinking, okay, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to play the two drop that I get. And then the two drop he saw was Loot Hoarder, which is just a really poor play into a Northshire Cleric, which is why he went backstab. Mm -hmm. And I went back and looked at his options for switching to secondary and tertiary, and we did determine that secondary is anti-rogue. And mm -hmm. when I think rogue, I think, okay, aggro, but it's not really helping in terms of removing minions, which was his problem in it's the first it's game. It's anti-weapon. Yes, it's right. only anti-weapon, and he has to remove Spellbreaker if he wants to do that. So he actually has no choice but to stick on the primary, I suppose, unless he wants to try and fit in a youthful brewmaster just as something to do on turn two. That's honestly not awful against Priest. It's it's not, but I feel like the uh, you know he ends up explosive trap isn't really a a, a, a bad uh, card to cut in the matchup. But I actually yeah. feel like Mojo Master Z he is a liability compared to uh, compared to say the Mask Contender, which is his other cut. Suni with the clerics, always. I, I feel like <laughs> one game out of what maybe eight we've seen Suni play throughout the weekend already has he not had clerics. I don't know that I don't know that he has ever not had a cleric in I the games that, the games that I have seen him play. So I saw one, I gasped, and then I looked away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we will see Cleric Cleric Ahmet kept. Uh Liss, I believe, kept that pressure plate. And draws a freezing trap. So those are those are a pair of what I believe to be some of the more important cards here. But no proactive stuff to help them. So off of the Hunter's Pack, there's a couple of decent weapons that you could get. Eagle Horn Bow comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, Desert Locust probably not so much. Desert Spear, rather. Not so much because that little poke damage is much better against decks that go wide rather than tall. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like I like the pressure plate here right away because you you, know, you don't really want to freezing trap this. You want to use freezing trap on a big thing that's been buffed already. Right. And you know, if this gets powered shielded, for instance, dead. You know, that that's a, a very powerful opportunity with the pressure plate. And the pressure plate also uh, makes it so that your your Ursatron you're looking to play next turn is, is that much more powerful because right. your opponent cannot buff their minion out of range of this. It would actually require Suni to have a different minion to play this turn in order for him to play around that uh, pressure plate. So he's already debating whether it's worth going all in with both clerics because that is the majority of his card draw, all the eggs in one basket. And card draw is very crucial to the Priest deck. So thinking about how can I get punished by playing two clerics, and the answer is Eagle Horn Bow. Yeah. I, I do want to point out, by the way, Suni did go to his tertiary deck. We see that which with Grizzly in hand. Uh, so that means he is uh, playing his, his list, which is intended uh, against aggressive decks, which gives him a bit more power in, uh, for stopping power, as it were, uh, with the Grizzly as a taunt, as well as uh, he adds a Zilliax. 
uh, and I believe a Mass Hysteria. Oh, no, not the Mass Hysteria. It's a different list. Uh, yeah. Bone Wraith, Akanai, Soul Priest, and Acidic Swamp, who's taking out uh, some of his uh, his removal in the form of uh, the Forbidden Words, the Topsy Turvy that gave him lethal last time. Right. Silence, uh, an Injured Blade Master, and the Witchwood Piper. Honestly, I feel like this is a switch that he doesn't feel 100% comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. Of course, overall, he's decided that the pros outweigh the cons. Right. But I just think that the reasoning behind this is that uh, I think the priest is meant to be the aggressor in this matchup, actually. And in terms of aggression, even just playing, Ooh. say, a 4-mana 2-5, it's not the highest attack stat, but anything with health suddenly Ooh, becomes a threat. The pressure plate here, it kills the, the North Shore Cleric it's that he buffed. buffed. Oh. And this is what makes pressure plate so powerful against this deck. You know, Now, Sunni is in a position, he has this cleric on the board, and he's got two circle of healings in hand. The, those are both pretty terrible without clerics. Exactly. He needs to commit divine spirit here for his cleric to not just be dead on board and for those those circle of healings to be mm. effectively useless. And you know what? I think he's forced into it. He does get a draw, and technically the cleric won't be dead on board, so... Yeah, he's going to get two draws because he does get the, the, the bump off of the, oh, uh, the yeah. uh, Ursatron as well. And uh, you know now a another secret. You know two other secrets in uh, List's hand here: freezing trap and rat trap. These are both also really awkward for the priest deck to deal with. The priest deck frequently plays a bunch of spells in a single turn, mm -hmm. has no uh, targeted removal to get rid of a six six. So freezing trap can get you know can stop a buffed minion. Rat trap can start to put the pressure on when you actually uh, try to go in to do any sort of powerful big combo turn. So, you know, List, despite uh, having a, a really rough game one, I think is in a pretty solid position this game. Yes, and he is just going to go for their secrets for the reasons you mentioned. And now Sunni... Uh, the Amet, though. The Amet's scary. Mm -hmm. He immediately played this. Um, I was also looking at possibly Injured Blade Master and then coining Nefrisat Ritualist, but that would be three cards. That's right. into Rat Trap. And also, you could possibly just get more value off of the Nefrisat. Mm-hmm. And now that he's confirmed that it's not snipe, I think it's pretty unreasonable to attack for any reason. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like the you know the things that you're scared of freezing. You don't really want to get this frozen mm -hmm. and have to you know like replay it for three here. Though at the same time, it's your best thing to get frozen. If you're gonna you're you're gonna get something frozen, like having your uh, your cleric uh, bounce is the cheapest possible thing you can replay. Uh, that said, you know he he does I think uh, want to try to maximize the card draw available to him and uh, wants to uh, use the cleric ASAP. Right, hunter secrets often set up situations where they force board tensions, uncomfortable amounts of board tension. So I think the card he's most looking for is mark shot. Ooh, animal companion could be good too, uh, because this this Ahmet is is really scary. He wants to try and get this off the board, if at all possible. Uh, Animal Companion into Huffer is the only really good thing here, though, in order to, to clear off the uh, the Ahmet. Mm -hmm. The Misha is also decent just because it doesn't die to any of these minions on a single trade. It's true. Leok could be disastrous, though. Okay, so Misha does come down. And uh, going to go ahead and attack into the Ahmet. This... Ooh, Akanai. That is one of the inclusions in the anti aggro Yeah, Akanai's kind of interesting here. He could... Well, Akanai's circle actually just dies <laughs> because of the Ahmet. The damage of the Ahmet's actually a really big deal here. Yeah. I, I feel like he's more likely to want to uh, just heal here. Mm. He could play the Injured Blade Master into Circle of Healing. He could also just play yeah. in Injured Blade Master... Yeah. Well, heal Fixture first, this. then play Injured Blade Master, then Circle. So you actually get a bunch of cards here. I'm looking at Blade Master Ritualist. Okay. To only heal your own things, the which means the the problem with that is that your your uh, Amet's at four, uh, so true. your your yeah. your blade master would literally just die. Would go to one. That's right? four seven takes go, has four health takes four. Why does oh because of Amet right, right, right. It comes to play with okay. four health because of Amet then we take four and die. That is very awkward. Yeah. But going for it this <laughs> way, he actually buffs the cleric, which is cute. I think that he can you, have to, you have to decide. Then, yeah. Try well, to you, get you have to decide whether you're what you're playing around here. Okay. So here's if he draws. Okay. Well, this is he's going for the the attack and heal here, which does trigger rat trap. 
it's the third spell, right? Because he played the circle. Yep. That was a very complex turn. Yeah, there's, th that's that's the thing about playing against these secrets, right? Like the the secrets out of the hunter deck, there are so many they're so bad for you. Um, and yeah, here. Uh, Sunni was able to generate a bunch of resources, which really was his plan. Ooh, that the, is an extremely good draw. Uh, Unleash the Beast is real nice here. Unleash nice. the Beast can clear off the Amet. He can clear off the entire board if he wants. Mm -hmm. He can also uh, clear off uh, Amet and the uh, the Cleric and then just send six damage to the face. I quite like the look of taking a bunch of value trades and just making sure that the board is yours for the rest of the game. I'm just unsure of the best way to distribute the trade damage to play around Wild Pyro and things. Right. There's also the consideration of Auk and A, but has both circles both circ been okay, yeah, both, both circles, circles are gone. Used, so, so. And, and right now, um, Liss has not yet seen any of the cards that would indicate that Sunni's playing uh, the tertiary deck that includes the Auk and I. True. So that's at least something to keep in mind. Hunter's Pack, really? All right, Liss is going for some value here, which is somewhat surprising to me. Unleash for three. No, Desert Spear. So okay. as it stands, he only needed that extra one damage to take a value trade with the 6-6. Six, six, and it's true. the Desert Spear with the 7-7. Seven, seven, the rest trade very cleanly as well. Mm -hmm. Although this leaves two minions with one health for Sunni, to, uh, three of them rather, yeah. for the Pyro to clean up. Well, this can even just be Pyro Coin Ziliax. Yeah. It actually clears the board. Yep. I, I like the look of that. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I feel like this is just I don't know. I, the Unleash the Beast gave you just such a cleaner board presence uh last turn that isn't nearly as vulnerable to Wild Pyro Man. So your opponent just drew a bunch of cards. I feel like you're you're probably in a better position just trying to jockey for the board as much as possible. And, and now, you know, this loses your entire board. I completely agree. I feel like I'm not sure what RG List is trying to squeeze the value out for. And in terms of value, having Unleash the Beast online is just right. value in, it, in and of itself. You know what's valuable? Having, having yeah. big minions in play. Yeah. And I'm not sure if there were any particular beasts or weapons he could get that justify going for the Hunter's Pack specifically on that turn. In any case, you can still go for Unleash the Beast and just clean up the Pyro with the Desert Spear, have a Locust on the board, but yeah. it does seem way less efficient than it would have been last turn. Yeah, and you know, Sunni, he's got a an okay hand here. The problem, you know, part of the problem is that with both clerics gone, both these, you know, both of the Circle of Healing's gone, um, he's only going to be really drawing one carpet turn. Yes, I believe there's the uh, the Acolytes in the deck still. Um, there's one Pyromancer gone, which makes you know, your sort of card drop potential a little bit lower, too. Yeah, yeah I think Suni is in a really rough spot because Archilis has the board right now. Suni will probably fight back with an Akinite hero power turn, but RNG List is not running out of value anytime soon. Right. He's also got Starving Buzzard Unleash the Hound. Right. Woohoo! What uh, year is it? <laughs> Uh, the, the Powered Shield is actually a pretty good draw because Akanai plus Powered Shield uh, gets out of range of the second half of Unleash the Beast. Mm -hmm. uh, it does run into uh, the the weapon plus mm -hmm. the uh, uh, plus the Locust taking it out, though. Yeah. Ah, the Ooh. weapon also triggers Starboard Buzzard. It does, yeah. Fun little interactions there. Well, the funny thing is, too, Starving Buzzard is not something that Sunni can really easily deal with. It's true. After this Akinai is gone, he only has that one Pyro left, and then the rest of the deck is just minions even, that don't have Rush. He could even Starving Buzzard kill command here, if he wanted to, to have the Starving Buzzard up, draw a card with the swing, Tr either trade in or use his face, because how is Sunni killing Starving Buzzard at that point? And then you have Unleash with Starving Buzzard, both Unleash the Beast and Unleash the Hounds. I like that. You can just that. generate more more resources and find more of your your board presence and removal. I mean, he still has Zephyrus in the deck. He still has Bran in the deck. So every card you draw, getting you closer to those just enormous game swinging cards, seems quite valuable to me. And also, it just uses all his mana right. as well. Um, the alternative to use all your mana is unleash the beast and explosive trap. That the explosive trap is not really doing anything for the next few turns. Yeah, I kind I kind of like just getting starving buzzard online. I don't know. This does le leave you with you know, the 5-2 minion in play. Rather than a 3-2. Yeah. But I think we've established that RNG list is not really playing like he's the aggressor here. 
Which is interesting because Suni switched to a tertiary, which indicates that he thinks he should be the one that is playing defensively. So Pyromancer with only a pretty low number of spells, just the one inner fire in hand. Uh, List does have a pretty full hand. He's got six cards still, so that uh, that Grizzly is not as scary as it otherwise just could be. Just defend Creeper. Mm -hmm. And yet it's the best option that Suni has yep. because it's the only thing that doesn't die straight up to one hit to the 5-2. We'll die it to the 5-2 and the 1-1. One, one. Is it Buzzard Unleash time? Yes! I don't know that it is because there's not quite enough damage. I think you, I think you want to actually, you, you need to take care of these minions. There's... I'm still going to say yes. <laughs> I mean, I w <laughs> listen, I wanted to play it last turn, okay? I okay. wanted to get the buzzard out there. And then, I mean, you get to unleash the be beast with buzzard in play. It's so sweet. It is. Mm. Okay. Um, more realistically, Mass Contender and Kill Command lets him deal. Well, actually, I quite like Kill Command Zilliax. But I feel like if you're, going for, if you're just trying to uh, address the board maximally, uh, your 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 best opportunity is Zilliax plus Kill Command. Looks like Bliss is trying to set up something else. It does get Mass Contender. Not quite sure what the secret was. Unity, precision. So this does you know help uh, help clear the board into a snake trap. Thank you, production. So what we know from this is that Liss values having the Mass Contender and a secret on board more than having a 5-2 and pushing the 5 base. So this to me clearly indicates that he's going for a control game plan. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder if that should tell Suni to move back to his primary, perhaps? Maybe. Well, assuming he doesn't win this game, but it really is not looking good for him. Oh, I don't think so, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, now there's a snake trap up with the Starving Buzzard! <laughs> starving Whoa! buzzard into oh, starving buzzard into hyena. Three my, my head just my head just exploded. <laughs> yes, I love it. please, yes. please, RNG that. No. I mean, this is this is good too. It is, but <laughs> it's, it's not what I want to see. But it's really powerful. So uh, just one on this on the Zilliax, and then two probably just yes. hanging out on yeah. their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you've seen a pyromancer. Your opponent's hand size is quite small. Um, so their ability to, to actually like pyro into triple spell to actually clear off all of your your uh, snip snaps and the uh, the microbots is really low. Counter proposal, I guess board space is a little bit relevant too because he's gonna go for hyena alpha at some point. So also just stacking the snip snap, I don't see a punish to this because Suni has cut the silence. Well, there, there I believe there's two silences in the deck and uh, Liss. You know, he does. He does know for sure that it is on that uh, the, that tertiary deck, but I believe there are two copies of Silence in the in the uh, the primary deck. So there's still the possibility of one coming out. But you know, this does give you a, a, a individual larger minion to attack into, say, an injured blade master. Ooh, okay, Pyro, a, a, and this would have been the possibility of actually clearing uh, mustard <laughs> off. But yeah, not just gonna bother. And, and there, I mean, I, we were talking about it before the the match even started, right? It was. Can Liss get those disruptive secrets? And he got Pressure Plate, mm -hmm. and Pressure Plate hit the right minion. He got Freezing Trap, he got Rat Trap. All of those put Suni in such awkward positions, and then Liss was just able to turn on his own game plan and really uh, put the pressure on while completely picking apart everything that Suni was trying to do. I am upset, though, that we had, what, three different turns where Starving Buzzard could have drawn a card, and it just never happened. If you're, if you're gonna cutting, he got, he got Desert Spear, and starving buzzard off a of hunter pack, and and never drew a card off of it. I was I was sad. He had unleash in hand. He drew hyena alpha. There were so many opportunities, but maybe maybe the RNG gods will smile upon us once again and give another <laughs> starving buzzard because we his are going team to is game literally three. named RNG. <laughs> Come on, it's true. That can't uh, be a coincidence. <laughs> there is no way. But no, I mean, I, I I think that you know we saw kind of both sides of how this can go. We saw the the game just totally snowballing in game one. The priest gets ahead and stays ahead, and then we saw those secrets really messing with that mm -hmm. in, in game two. The the priest trying to get ahead and the secret saying nope, nope, that's not going to work out. And game three, you know, which way is it going to go? They have right. been both very one-sided games in either direction. And I feel like the more I watch this, Priest, the more I realize that the way it works kind of just encourages one-sided games. Either they can deal with your early board or it snowballs. It's a very it's a very, uh, a very very polarized deck, I would say. Yeah. Not, not just in terms of its matchups, but in terms of the way the games play out. Yeah. Because you are playing a deck that has a bunch of buffs. If you have minions in play, you can buff them. They stay in play. Good 
you know, good. You're probably going to win. Wow, sick right? opening hand from Orange Elus. But yeah, that is pretty much the fundamentals of Hearthstone. And Suni, with the presence of Akane and Bonewraith in that option for Mulligan, we do know he's still on his tertiary. So he clearly believes that, you know, having more minion presence with the Bone Wraith and I think Witchwood Grizzly is more valuable to him than having Forbidden Words and Silence, for example. All right. Well, it, it is no Cleric, by the way. Suni, he, he, he broke Ooh. the streak. No turn one Cleric. And List deciding, do I want to play a Spring Paw? Do I want to sort of uh, get this on the board right now? Do I want to... You know, maybe conceal the fact that I have it, not open it up to, to getting uh, removed. All right, Injured Tolvir is the draw, pretty powerful. I think that going second and having seen that there wasn't a Cleric on one, the Spring Paw seems good. Also, yep. he is just sitting on coin any of these three drops to help well, the curve flow out. The bow in particular is really powerful because as I was just mentioning, you know, this, this uh, Priest deck really relies on having the board. And being able to kill a multiple minions with this bow can be a, a huge back-breaking uh, you know, sort of development opportunity for the rogue, uh, rather for the hunter. But the, the Psycho Pump for Suni is, is also extremely powerful because he's going to have a 2-6 Reborn coming down next turn alongside that 3-1. Mm -hmm. The way that this game has panned out, I think, allows Suni to go for more of the game plan that he indicated by switching to the tertiary, which is being right. patient and milking the value out of his cards. And we see that RNG Lissa's hand is way more aggressive than it was last game. He's got Animal Companion and the Ursatron, Subject 9. It's going to be a lot for the Priest. I do want to point out that I, that I think that this Ursatron compared to Animal Companion is specifically paying respect to Psycho Pomp because you end up with your 3-3, three, uh, your three, three, which survives attacking into the 2-6, plus your weapon, and then you have a 1-1 one, one to attack into the remaining 1 health minion mm -hmm. uh, alongside even, you know, either a, a Lynx or a, an Animal Companion, you know, Unleash the Hounds, a number of options you have yeah. to clear off the Psycho Pomp as well. It's perfect the way it lines up because if he had gotten Hover here, then it would have been eaten by the 2-6 and Misha obviously was a better outcome, but that's only one in three. So the Ursatron made a lot of sense there. Right. You know, List just sort of maximizing his ability to deal with the worst case scenario, which I think in that case was the Psycho Pomp and uh, you know, is rewarded as that is exactly what comes down. The bow here though, you know, as, as I was saying last turn, super crucial, giving him the ability to pick apart the board uh, without uh, ending up losing his own board presence. You know, he is going to uh, end up leaving himself pretty vulnerable to a wild pyromancer here with a, uh, a number of uh, somewhat damaged minions, or at least the uh, the Ursatron being damaged. But the fact that he did just get the Misha is a very good spot for him because that is difficult for Sunni to remove. Yeah, this is honestly kind of a nightmare for Sunni. He can go for the pyro extra arms, but then it gets traded straight away by the Misha. Or the Zilliax that we see in hand from RNG. Not even that we see in hand, too. Suni knows a card is, ca is getting drawn off of that, and it's True. either Snipstep or Zilliax, mm -hmm. right? So at, at best for him, there's a 50-50 chance that there's just a Zilliax coming down, and, and we know that it's already in the hand. So with that in mind, maybe there's a world where Suni instead goes for Bone Wraith, tries to maybe put some damage on the Misha and set up for a Zilliax of his own on the next turn. The problem is that's floating a lot of mana across two turns, and maybe he'd rather save Bone Wraith to pair with extra arms immediately. Yeah, this is a really tough spot here for Suni. There's not really great options for him. Just, just gonna, I think, play the Zilliax no attack? Uh, if he, if, he if he attacks into the Misha, he does set himself up to Pyro next get turn. right. Well, and if there's already, yeah, he wants to he wants to set these both broken to be able to uh, you know d get rid of them with the uh, the Pyro. There is the Zilliax here though. The Zilliax on the Ursatron can take this out, keep the uh, the Misha alive to push damage in two, or he can just take the trade here and drop a Subject Nine. Yeah. The Subject 9 gets him all those secrets, which really put Suni in such a tough spot last game. I definitely like that. Even though RNG list has a somewhat clear read on Pyro with that attack from Zilliax, uh, it's still too yeah. powerful to forego going Subject 9. Yeah, sure. Subject 9 is just so good here. Finds lists a bunch of tools, which, as we saw last game, are so good against this Priest deck. 
just drawing five also is so insane. It thins his deck, makes the quality of the average draws off the top way better. I just don't see a way Suni gets there anymore. You know, it just makes Suni's life so miserable, right? Because mm -hmm. you have to play around all these secrets. And all of them, you know, so many of them are so terrible for you. Pyromancer into a pressure plate is a nightmare, right? Like you're you're, you're trying to play around, you know, play a, a multi-spell turn and your opponent could have freezing trap, pressure plate, rat trap. And then you're like, oh, well, all of my things are awful here. Yeah. And RNG just traded away Misha because he was going to overdraw with the Snip Snap draw if he traded uh, Ursa Tron, but that's no s no problem to him at all. No sweat off his back. Just going to be probably Bone Wraith extra armed here. Yeah, I mean, this is this is just really, really rough for Suni. You know, I, f I feel like here, you know, yes, he can he can Bone Wraith extra arm. He could just Pyro extra arms. You know, it does clear some stuff. Yeah, no, is going to be bone right into extra arms here. This, you know, does just get eaten by the board. Yeah, I do think that he has to hold on to the pyro to pair with acolyte though. So I can see where Suni's coming from, but he is really slipping away from that, winning the game. That snip snap draw actually allows Liss to load up the snip snap. Two snip snaps on the Ursatron, clear off the uh, the bone wraith front half, <laughs> clear off the second half if he wants with the. Uh, uh, the subject nine. There's also just the opportunity to just play a bunch of secrets, mm -hmm. and, and that I think is something that Liss has to be considering. Because if he, say he plays freezing pressure plate rat trap here, what are Suni's options? Like what could he do that's possibly even close to good? Um, nothing comes to mind, Gilbert. Because uh, here, snip snap, snip snap. I, I think this is this is a pretty clear like this is the best thing to do right now that gives me a, a you know, powerful board presence. Um, and I, I think that it's still there, you know, it, this is very strong because if, unless Suni can play Pyro and then four spells, which is pretty unlikely with the mana he has available, the first one cannot yeah. be Circle of Healing. Although with the draw of Cleric, Suni can now fill up his hand for himself. And you did mention that there was the option to play Rat Trap last turn to prevent some type of outcome like this from happening. What is this doing exactly? It's not clearing the board from RNG list, but it's giving Suni way more cards, so mm -hmm. he could possibly try and swing with some Psycho Pump, a Met combo type sure, thing. Sure, sure. Um, it is very painful for Suni though that he's going to have to expend a Circle of Healing and, you know, essentially recharge Lissa's board. I, I feel like Suni just kind of took that, took those first two actions really quickly, and is now like, wait. I'm not sure this is right. He's thinking about whether he overdraws with Akali, but honestly, I think that should be the least of his concerns because sure. he just needs a full hand or more I, options. I think if I were in Suni's position, I would have interfired the Ursatron to get it down to a three attack minion mm. rather than inner, uh, inner uh, firing my Cleric, which is... Oh, yeah, he has a Silence now, so that's actually good. Okay. That is a one of after the... Not going to play it. Because he doesn't want to kill his cleric here. Or yeah, ra rather pyro, kill his, right. his pyro. That's what I meant. Okay, so he did pick up Amet, but the second Psycho Pump is still eluding the hand. Yeah, the best case scenario for Suni is getting uh, Amet into Psycho Pump into some sort of taunt. Right. Because that actually gives him the ability to, you know, just have these enormous health reborn taunt. Uh, that will protect him from from Liss's uh, potential uh, attacks here. Now, though, with a ton of cards and a ton of mana, you know Liss can take out the cleric or the pyro, and you know choose what secret he wants. You know, secrets he wants to uh, to play down here. I'm curious. I actually totally. Oh, that's unleash right all the way on the left. Yeah, I quite like the look of the Unleash just because the board probably isn't getting wider from Suni, and also the minions are actually at a reasonable health total for the Hounds to take down. And he could just play two secrets. You know what he can do? He can overdraw them. Of course he can. That's what that's what Chat wants, I'm sure. Two attacks into the. <laughs> so just a Hound into Pyro, two into the Cleric, four three into one two, push seven face. Yeah, you, you actually you, you don't want to take up the the, the acolyte here, despite what uh, <laughs> the wishes. Oh, he's okay. He, yeah, he, he is going to take it out. But he doesn't want to attack the multiple minions into it. Oh, there is psycho pump. There's okay, power but, combo, but but staring down uh, eleven. But there's there's also the snipe. 
And the snipe here means that Ahmet becomes three health. Oh, yeah. Immediately, which makes it so much more dangerous. And the, the other uh, play for a secret was the, uh, the rat trap. So if he does say Ahmet into Psycho Pump into, say, silence your Ursatron, boom, 6-6. Six, six. Mm -hmm. Seems like this really covered all his bases, specifically choosing to go for Snipe last turn, I mm -hmm. guess, to play around specifically Ahmet into stuff. And the, the thing is, the Ahmet isn't even that scary uh, unless it uh, also you know, pl it involves playing like a reborn Taunt Minion. <laughs> Uh, and specifically, also, the, the snipe plays around while Pyromancer. Yeah, so Sunni says, okay, well, I don't want to get, you know, my Pyromancer sniped if I think that that's what I need to do. And yeah, we're going to see, I think, Pyro silence. And a rat activated. Yeah, and, and that, this is, this is the, the pain of all of these, these traps. At the very least, he'll clear off the board too, so only nine on the other side, but only nine is probably not the no, correct he's, he's way to say He's going to take out everything but the, but the rat, but that oh, rat okay. is scary. You know, that rat is still a very big problem, and there's a Zilliax waiting to take down this... Wow. Uh, oh, oh, and man. there's just Bran. <laughs> okay, this uh, this game is really slipping away from Sunni here. You know, the, the damage from that rat is, is two-turn lethal with Bran. Right, he, there can be Zilliax into pressure plate, attack your face, brand plus hero power, lethal, even through a heal next turn. There could be brand now. There could be brand now if he wants it. Right? Yeah. yeah there's there's a, you know a lot of options. I, I feel like there's at least some incentive to to get rid of this wild pyromancer. Maybe you don't even right. need to bother though. Yeah. Oh, I there's feel like even more options. Probably leaving the wild pyro up is the only way you lose to some egregious combination of spells. Well, if you brand now, it, it, you know, leaving, leaving a minion up is always a, a bit scary against uh, a Divine Spirit Air Fire deck, right? Right. And it, it is a, a pyro, so it's less likely to get too big. But yeah, here we're just going to see you're at 14. What do you do now? Right. And the pressure plate. Yep, it does just leave Sunni in a position where, okay, you want to play a big taunt and buff it? It's dead. No options whatsoever. Going for the King Crush that turn... If the 6-3 didn't trade into the Pyro, maybe opened up Pyro trading into Kraken Crush and then uh, Akanai's Circle. But even then, Both. like, Suni wouldn't be, yeah. would be behind. So I, I feel like Suni, High Priest into Psychopomp into Taunt is, like, the only way he doesn't he doesn't end up just dying here. And Has he even played a Taunt? I feel like I, he, played the, he played the Bone Wraith. The Bone Wraith okay. is the only Taunt that he has played. There has not been an injured Tolvir that I can recall this game. So I, I really think that that is, is the only way that Suni gets out of this. He, doesn't, he of course, doesn't know that Bran is in the hand. Um, but even just against this board, it's just a huge board. Yeah, he could be thinking of maybe Ahmed uh, Akenai and just hero power down to Zillian. Okay, I like this first. I like yeah. the inner fire first does reduce the damage at least. And he's Ahmed, and here we see he's just praying. All right, show me a taunt. It's a taunt! And he, there was another one, not just the Bone Wraith. Okay, that was huge. Yes. That was absolutely huge. And yet, even though this is a very powerful stack of stats that Suni has played for, for eight mana, how does he get through a King Crush that just takes a value trade? Doesn't have to kill him this turn. Well, the, the, the King Crush takes a value trade, but leaves a 2-7 taunt behind because of the Ahmet and the, the Reborn on the Injured Tolvir here. It's true. So in that case, he would be forced to probably set up a secret instead. Well, well, alongside the King Crush. Yeah. So I mean, there's the the fact that that Liss has has Zuljin in his hand makes me think that you know there's the the best way for him to navigate this is to play into Zuljin in some capacity, whether it's you know, using the Unleash the Beast here, or it's, you know, playing out the, the brand plus a secret here. One of the, 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 you know, really powerful things, you know, this just, this does just, like, fights the Reborn. You at least got rid of this. And now, th there is a little awkwardness. You don't really want to play Freezing into the Psycho Pump. That's the thing, right? Because your, your opponent could just hit another, uh, another taunt off this. So, yeah, he's going to go ahead and, and play the Snake Trap. And put a little damage into the mm -hmm. only thing he can. Right. Nefer set, okay. I was thinking if that 
this was going to be the play, was it ever better to maybe try and fit in the Secret Keeper alongside that Unleash the Beast? Well, Again, well, choosing also, the Zildjian. Like, if, if, you're, if you're just doing this, right? Is is unleash the beast? Yeah, unleash the beast. Secret keeper, secret better because you you effectively do the same thing in killing the the, the taunt. Right. You don't get the, uh, the the king crush in play this turn, which is I think part of the you know the, the value of this is you just have a king cr crushing attack next turn, right? Um, but you also don't expose your king crush, and if you do play Zuljin, you have the unleash the beast coming out in addition to getting all your secrets back. So I I think I agree with you that I like that. Uh, better as as a possible play that turn. Yeah, this never set ritualist. Okay, now he, the reason that he's doing it this way is pressure play. He's playing the extra arms because he wants to get the buff, and it did not kill the Ahmed. The Ahmed so did not kill the taunt. Wow. Both crucial. And he can rebuff the Ahmed. And right, kill and now the he can kill crush, he can kill Kring Crush. But not before playing another minion first to get that eleven health on it, I suppose. Right. Is he? Oh, he's, is he, not, he's not killing, killing crush. Him. Wow, okay. Very bold. And he's just relying on this taunt to get there. And you know, maybe this is the way to go about it. Just trying to set up a counter lethal if he gets divine spear. Ah, but no more inner fire either. Okay, so the Siamat can be Wind Fury Rush, take out the two seven and the Amet. Along with the snakes, very useful right. here. And, and, and another and snake then can, and push, can push the King Crush into the face. I, I still really feel like the you know you just put yourself in such a stronger position to to lean on Zuljin if you had played the Unleash the Beast last turn. Although this is still an avenue to victory as long right. as he clears everything. I mean, I think the King Crush probably goes into the injured Blade Master here, and then Zuljin should just seal the game on the following turn. These snakes are actually very clutch. Oh, they're they're a big deal. Yeah, yeah. these these snakes are, are giving just the, the last little bit that uh, that list needs to to clear these. You yeah, can't just leave two minions. Right. Yeah. The the fact that are you okay. He's he's gonna kill uh, Ahmed and the psycho pump so that whatever he isolates with freezing trap is not a problem to be found. Okay. Well, there's still, yeah, there's only oh. two cards at hand here, so. He knows one of his more arms as well, so there's no real threat of, like, Divine Spirit Inner Fire, and that's not even lethal. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do like this from List here. This is, you know, a, a good control situation. Ends up getting this bounced. And, and he now. has to deal with the Siamat, otherwise he's dead, and then the Soul Priest probably just puts a hero power into King Crush. Yep. And Suni is praying that there's no Zuljin, no refill. And he's got to play Ritualist before playing the Soul Priest, where he's just killing <laughs> all his stuff. That'd be yeah. pretty funny. But yeah, Zuljin should seal the game here. Probably playing, what, five secrets? Four or five secrets? Well, there's there's no Unleash the Beast of the Zuljin, right? That's still the, the first half of the Unleash the Beast. So, like, this, how powerful are those secrets, really? Well, it's also playing Unleash the Ooh, Hounds. Contract. It's going to play Animal Companion. It's, it's true. definitely going to generate board presence. Right, but I, I wonder if, I wonder if uh, Liss is better off actually just playing the Unleash the Beast first, and you know he can play Unleash the Beast, Explosive Trap, kill off everything except for the, uh, mm. the Blade Master here, and then he's also isolated for his Zuljin Freezing Trap coming back to be much more powerful. Sure. I do think both of these are avenues to victory. I certainly Almost, feel like, yeah, I yeah. certainly feel like Liss is in a hugely advantaged spot right here. You know, the, that Zuljin is going to be absolutely backbreaking whenever it happens, but I think more so if you get the Unleash the Beast off first, and it looks like Liss agrees. Okay. Actually putting damage onto one big minion okay, instead yeah. of so uh, killing off the Akinite. Right. The idea here is that he thinks that the only way he can realistically lose from this position is just getting uh, Divine Spirit Inner Fired. Right. And uh, that cannot happen, uh, at least with the, the Akinite up. And... Uh, it also means that Suni is not able to use a healing hero power at his right. own discretion. Right. Yeah, leaving that up means that there's no healing of this to actually uh, make it bigger. Nice identification from Suni that he could abuse the explosive trap there to get um, yeah. 
a draw of the Acolyte, but it probably won't be relevant. Well, this, I mean, this is giving Lis like a pretty, a pretty big board now. He, he could actually, if he, if he really wanted to, trade in and then circle to heal this board as well. Right. Because that gives you, you know, it gives you a, a six health, well, actually, uh, eight health taunt and uh, full health or nearly full health Blade Master. Yeah, I like this. From Suni's perspective, this is his best way to win, but I think the Zul'jin will just be sealing things. I, I, don't, I don't know if it totally seals things, right? Because it, it's obviously extremely powerful. Um, but it doesn't actually, like, you're going to unleash and uh, and get one, un uh, unleash the beast, unleash the hounds, animal companion, bunch of traps. Yeah. I agree that's extremely powerful, you know, but you're not actually uh, killing everything or even isolating. Unless you have one more way to actually take out a minion, it, it depends on what the animal companion is. If the animal companion is is Leoc or Huffer, then I, I totally agree with you because you just get your opponent down down to uh, just one thing. So it's not a hundred percent seal, but I do think it would be more than enough, given that Suni only has one card. Right. He can't divine spirit inner fire. Um. Arcane shot. Arcane shot's really big here. Can actually just kill that. Uh, yeah. Kill it if he wanted to. I guess it's not gonna. He, okay, he, he needs one more mana. Yeah, he's gonna play the Unleash the Beast. I was thinking that he was actually gonna be able to take out the. Uh, he is just sticking cleric? to this plan okay. of keeping everything low right. health, and from that point, he thinks <laughs> there's no way he can lose. There's Divine Spirit. I'm just trying to say that if I were Suni here, and then I saw the Zuljin come oh, you're, this I mean, late, I'd be Zuljin, very upset. Zuljin happens, yeah. and you you yeah. like throw your hands up, and you're like, oh god. It was there all along, and you were playing like. The only way to oh, there's only one card track. left in Suni's deck. That's something that I actually hadn't even been keeping track of. True. So his last card is actually Inner Fire. Right? He has Divine Spirit, more, more arms, Divine Spirit, Divine Spirit here. And his last card is Inner Fire. So with that in mind, he should just cash in the Divine Spirits. I and the more arms, I think. Can more arms, Divine Spirit, Divine Spirit on the, the Tolvir? Right. Just get in for, uh, you know, have a 14... 14, 28 health minion. Does that actually? Uh, does that actually put him in a position? Possibly. That he can win. If he trades in the him. trades in the um, the blade master, more arms, divine spirit, divine spirit, attacks for four, gets a 28 health minion. Yes, you know, yes. Think, yeah, he might even trade the the Tolvir instead and keep the injured blade sure. master on board. Sure. Yeah. But no, this he's gonna have. It, it's lethal damage that this is representing anyway. At at 28, yeah. Right. Oh, he's not, not going to trade at all. Okay. I guess, yeah. This With the, with the, the Inner Fire's the last card. <gasps> Spellbreaker. <Wow. laughs> oh, my uh, God. The Spellbreaker kills everything. It does. Yeah, the, the Spellbreaker is more powerful than Zildjian here. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Spellbreaker does. Does funny, so much damage. Funny how that works. You're but you're absolutely right. Oh, uh, look at you. Suni is crushed. Doesn't quite kill everything, but definitely kills Suni's hopes of winning yeah, I this mean, game. Well, that last car card is Inner Fire, and that, that went from dealing 28 to dealing 6. And now there's Zul'jin. More realistically, there's just the Concede button. Right. <laughs> I mean... I'm out of cards. And... Oh, it's, oh, it's not Inner Fire. It's well, Witchwood Lewis. Grizzly. <laughs> Never mind. I thought he had an Inner Fire left. I'm foolish. Liss is not... Liss is the winner. And it is important, though, to keep in mind, Suni is not out yet. Mm -hmm. These are double elimination groups that these players are playing through to advance to the top four. But that means that Liss is just one win away from making it to the elimination rounds tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow we will be at the OGN Stadium, which I'm told is a sold out crowd. And pretty nice because us casters will be there with the players feeling the hype and getting to you know have fun with everybody and see just who gets to take home that one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I I mean I am looking forward enormously to tomorrow. I I've never been to a live event in Korea before. I'm mm -hmm. told that it is absolute madness. I frankly, you know, list winning there, you know, I, I feel great for him. I do hope that we have a Korean player make it through tomorrow because the hype will be absolutely real. But there are more matches to come before we determine who the four players who will be competing in the elimination rounds are tomorrow. So don't go anywhere. The Masters Tour Soul continues right after this.